Hello everyone, I am Deviant Shadow Prophecy, joined once again by my co-caster Deviant Hello, Firehawk. Everybody. We, are we are coming at you again with uh, episode 2, or episode 3, depending on the order of uh, the uploads, uh, of our Cardfight Vanguard This casting. will be 3. Fantastic, episode 3. Once again, we are playing at our local shop, Coffs Harbour Good Games, managed by Vincent Young. Shout out to you. We have an, an interesting matchup today of... Grand Blue on the right hand side of your screen and a Shadow Paladin deck list on the left hand side. It's gonna be a fun one, I think. It'll be quite a fun one. I think you're right. Very, I very mean, true. it's a very interesting matchup because the Shadow really needs to hope to kind of play into Grand Blue's mistakes. Well, that's exactly right, but then the, the Grand Blue player is able to punish uh, the Shadow Paladin player with the use of their G Guards and Skeleton Cannoneer if they can actually. Off. That's the thing, it, it's kind of a bit of a 50-50 matchup in a way, but technically Grand Blue should win that one. Well, I think at the moment it's, especially with the release of uh, GB10, with the, the new stuff for the, the Shadow Paladins there, the Lyle Hours and even Ogma to an extent, uh, I think it's actually a little bit more towards the Shadow Paladin flavor, but that does actually change with the release of Rummy Labyrinth. Mm, yes, well, we're going to see how this one goes as well. We're drawing hands, which is... It'll be interesting to see how we go from here. Looks like there's a fair few grade threes in there. <laughs> yes, yes, looks like our uh, Grand Blue player is taking four and our Shadow Paladin player taking one. Oh, I think it was one, yeah. I think it was one by the looks of that one. Uh, it's, it's, this is a matchup I quite enjoy because it can swing either way and it swings very drastically in a way that's it's quite exciting to, to play and watch, really. Yeah, yeah. well, I'm, I'm looking forward to this. I've not actually seen this match. I was watching another one while we were recording. Yeah. So I'm interested to see well, how I it goes. Well, I am a Shadow Paladins player for all the viewers out there who, who wish to know roughly what I look like, or at least my forearms do. <laughs> Forearm watch in the view there. It's a, it's a sexy watch. All right, so looks like we've uh, got the redraw. Shadow Paladin player looks to have a pretty good hand. It looks as though he can ride up through the grades. And I couldn't quite catch our Granbu player, but it looks like he seems okay. Oh. Does seem to be missing a grade two at this point, but we'll, we'll see, see how that how goes. That goes. So it starts by forgetting to draw. That's a big disadvantage straight away. It, uh, riding into Tommy the Ghosty Brothers and passing the turn. It does happen. Um, I it think does, we've all yes. done it. I would like to point out this, uh, this Granbu player is recently returning to the game, so uh, it is totally acceptable for him to be forgetting a few of the nuances of the game. See an opening with Swordbreaker, which is good for Swordbreaker to have in the soul at least. Yep, uh, heal trigger for the Shadow Paladin player and a stand trigger for the Grand Blue player. Passing the turn back, drawing the turn. Does not find a grade two, we'll see if he decides to G assist. It's, it's a very interesting decision, isn't it? Because you can kind of flip the turn order if you choose not to G assist for that one turn, but they can hit you with Spectral if you are sitting on G2. Very true, very but true. But at G1, it's, it's actually, you know, almost kind of an advantage to not go into that G assist. And he decides not to, so that's very interesting. Deciding if he wants to call more units down. Does seem to decide... No, no maybe. we're thinking about it. It's a good play to put some early aggression on with with the fact that he can't hit great. You might as well put a look. Does play the heel trigger. Mm, thoughts on that one? Uh... I personally would not have called them heal triggers just to save the extra guard. And as I said, two guards are very important in this matchup. And the 6k actually was able to hit the 6k base off the sword breaker. Do so I do see a hole going down. Critical trigger's nice. Though. That's also draw very trigger, so very nice for Shadow Paladin. And another draw trigger. What no. a punish. <laughs> RNG is very much in the favour of the Shadow Paladin player as Oh yeah, that's now. a like the 10k vanilla. Calls them off Look up. at that opening. So it's, it's kind of countering that early aggression that the uh, Grand Blue player decided to put on the Shadow Paladin player. And the Grand Blue player being stuck on grade one is a very unfortunate thing. Yeah, the, for those double draw draw tricks. Skeleton Cannoneer, the damage check. 15k attack. <laughs> Deciding whether he wants to guard. No guard is declared. A Powell for the drive check. And the damage check is a Night Rose. 
which is unfortunate that grade 2 got put into the damage zone right there. Very, very smudge. Let's see, he draws and doesn't find it, but does find a Night Rose, which is an optimal grade 3 ride. We'll see if he decides to GSS this At this point, time. you really got to. I mean, that's, you don't have much of a choice because you're going to get way too far behind. Well, there is uh, some merit to maybe not G-assisting and just calling the critical trigger to try and draw and fish for it. However, I think the G-assist is the correct play, as you can still use the critical trigger to draw after the G-assist, therefore mitigating some of the, the original cost of doing so. Here comes G-assist right now, Shadow Held and Raven, a brief look at the cards. Uh, does check. Great. It does find a grade 2, so that's good. He's actually got a choice. He didn't whiff, which is always a thing, right? Yes, very, very good. Deciding which three he wants to ride. Uh, in this case, given the choice, I, um, I'm not exactly sure what his stride deck looks like, but I personally would have ridden the Negro Lazy, just because that is a key card in uh, a lot of Grumbler's combos. But the uh, Negro. Uh, Bone, I believe that is. I'm not entirely sure. The grade 2 Negro card uh, is also quite not too Yeah, because right. they can do a fair bit of soul blasting if I'm remembering correctly from Grand Blue to get that into the drop zone. Yeah, well, Go, Go Ash is a very, very strong stride for the Grand Blue deck. Let's see what he decides to get rid of for the, the G assist here. If it was up to me, I'd get rid of the two Gas Dragons that are in his hand. Yeah, you'd lose too much guard power going up for anything else there. I think you're right there. Just get rid of the grade 3s. Because you've already got that Night Rose. Oh, interesting. Gets rid of the heal trigger and the critical trigger from the deck. Relying wow. a little too much on the grade Very 3 power. Bold. And getting rid of Goash as well. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, interesting choices. So, no guard power in the hand. Uh, the player. This could be over on the first they stride can stride, if they do get to that stride, they can stride pretty successfully. Yes, but I think Singus has got rid of the Goash is only limited to over Dire, which whilst it does filter his deck and set up his drop zone, he doesn't get the opportunity to uh, rebuild his hand or maybe even get the opportunity for combo attacks off. It also depends on how a Shadow, pl yeah. shadow player right now can come back on that one. Must to clear no guard and a skeleton cannoneer, which is quite a good card in the matchup. PG going into the damage zone for the shadow player. Standing and drawing. Let's see what he rides. Does ride the little arch. Which is the, the, the optimum ride for this deck. Yes, especially in this matchup. Try to maintain as much of your hand as you possibly can for those combo attacks when they do come through. Listen, we're seeing some thinking here right now. Shadow Paladin player using the utmost amount of his brain to try and decide what he wants <laughs> to do. Throw a little shade there. Calls a Hoel and his Stride Potter, allowing him to, uh, oh, changing the lane, that's fine. Swings for Vanguard for 16, that's a 10k guard. Now, as we know, the uh, Grumble player does not have any guard in his hand. So currently. this is going to hurt. I also think that the, uh, the Shadow Paladin player has made a bit of a mistake here in his order of attacking. He probably should have attacked with the 9k base first, allowing him to get in an extra attack barring a trigger, which we do see. Yeah, which was just a mistake on the, the attack line there, which does happen. Yeah. Could be nullified with uh, the return trigger on the Shadow Paladin player side. It does decide to swing. Again, there's probably not a whole lot of guard in this hand. He is at 4 damage, so he's, he's got to start worrying at this point, at least Grumble the player does, worrying about the fact that uh, he's not that far from lethal. Well, that's exactly right. So that's uh, one trigger to pass, I believe. And no trigger there. And doesn't pull a trigger. Definitely can stride next turn, which is nice. Well, definitely can stride next turn, as his hand is all grade threes. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, let's see what the Grumble player can piece together. He stands his units and draws for turn. Shadow player, however, is set up, set up in a nice field. A very, very good setup for him. Having the whole on board early is very key. That Morpheus has also got a force guard power. If, very if there true. was any guard power. <laughs> Very true. Also, uh, if we see the Shadow Paladin player being able to G-guard this turn, we may see a very, very interesting uh, 
the way that the game could progress going into either a Diablo or a Spectral straight away. Very possible if they play it right. Whether it's needed in well, if there is a whether it's needed right now, it's a bit debatable. Well, that, that's very true. It's not quite needed at the moment, but we'll see. Looking through his stride deck, we'll see what he goes for. I think the, the natural choice would be Obadiah. He's having a bit of a look. Yeah. Just thinking about Blizzard to get straight to the GB2 is also quite a good idea. Can't use Night Rose first up as it won't be a generation break 2 to activate the effect. Which is, it looks like he's reading right about now. Quite a good card, Night Rose. We'll see how the uh, the adaptation of the the Grand Blue deck after Rummy Labyrinth will actually include this deck or not. A lot of the Asian players have decided to cut it from the list, but I personally still do see some uh, some use for it in able to get combo attacks and just good numbers out. I mean, ultimately this deck isn't a bad deck, and with some more support it could be even great, whether it gets cut from the top tier or not. Yeah, it doesn't really matter for the deck too much, a good player can make any deck really work. Yeah, well, that's exactly right. I'm, I'm hoping to see the day where a, uh, a Magia deck will top, because that is one of my favourite decks that they've ever released. I mean, I'd personally love to see a Spike Brother deck top, but I don't think that's ever going to happen. Well, that would be the day. That would be the day. They would be very broken to get them to that point, I think. Well, they don't need a whole lot more, to be honest, the Spike Brother deck. It's looking pretty great at the moment. Well, it'll be interesting to see how that evolves over time, at least, but this matchup is... Yeah. I'm just looking here, I don't think that our, uh, our Grumble player has actually paid the cost for Strive. Possibly not. As I'm, I'm not seeing a grade 3 and He may it. also not be striking. I'm, I'm confused as to how he's called the Rough Seas Banshee from the drop zone, then. I, I think we've uh, seen a bit of a misplay here. It's quite possible. Oh, okay, so he's just I'm doing just it in a, in a slightly in a, different order. Okay, okay. Fair <laughs> enough, fair enough. You, you may see some weird things happen on this series, but it's all good. That's it's it. All good. As we said, Grand Blue player is new, newly returning to the game, and things have changed a little bit since the last time. Yeah, we did dumping in the, dumping in the middle of the record. Yeah. Yeah. Does go into what you said. Yes. Using Obadiah's skill to filter three cards from the deck, if two or more have the hollow ability, he's able to get a ghosty from the drop zone into the field, which is very nice. It's a free plus. And look at all those triggers on the bottom of this deck. My that god. Was just unfortunate. Alright, let's see what he decides to go for. He gets a Gas Dragon. A, another Gas Dragon. Really filtering out the grade threes here. You're seeing a little bit of Morikawa right there. And deciding perhaps the grade two Negro to uh, to call. Uh, sorry, to remove the hollow. Honestly, if you if, if you have skulls and a cannoneer floating around, that'd be a nice thing to have. Indeed, I have seen uh, a few throughout this game. I know he rode one. There is one in the damage zone already. Uh, so he does decide to ditch the ghosty. That way he can get the advantage of it straight away. Would have been interesting if you managed to get a skeleton cannoneer in there. Yes, very true. I think with the right play, the shadow play could be pretty heavily shut down. Well, it does depend here. The Shadow Paladin has got quite a lot of advantage in his hand due to those early draw triggers. Yeah, that, that critical was just unfortunate, drawing two draw triggers. Even without Luar or any, any sword breakers, that hand is ginormous for this size. Or time, I should say. Yes, very true. Yeah, as long as it's not a trick. Now, I see him call that ghost. Retiring starter, very, very smart idea. Putting it where it can actually do something. Grenache, uh, Grenache one of the, the key cards in the Grand Blue deck, allowing it to recover almost all of its costs during the end phase of the turn. It's incredibly powerful card. Indeed. Oh, no, it looks like we're going to pop so, calling a Gas Dragon. See if he decides to call, uh, I believe that's Columbard down to the rear guard to get another attack. He does. I'm a little bit worried how low he's going in the end right now. As am I. I think he's trying to, to risk it all on this attack, so we'll see how this goes. 
judging by the damage and the amount of cars it shot, as I don't think he's going to be able to punch through. I don't think he's going to be able to either. But we will see. Trigger checks could change this game. In a Very bit. true. Good trigger checks can win you a game. Look at the card there, trying to figure out what it actually does. So you swing, you give it a heap of power, two cards in, and then we resolve this. Okay. So, so he interestingly, uh, if he decides not to boost here, he can actually get off quite a nice chain of attacks. With bouncing hollow units? Yeah, so essentially he uses his column bar to get another unit out of the drop zone, and I believe he's got a grade 2 in there that would be quite lovely. Uh, he decides to boost though, so it's very interesting. Heals a Ruin Shade and a Perfect Guard. It does take a damage, so goes to 5. We should see the column bar attack next, but we'll see. Looks like he's going to go Vanguard. Looks like he's going with the Vanguard, which will be met with a Perfect Guard. That's one, one, three, we'll see going into the drop zone. Yeah. So we'll see what the triple drive delivers us. Gets a heal, that's quite lovely. That's... He's unable to heal, unfortunately. That was a little bit of a sneaky play there by the Shadow player, just putting into fire so no heals can, can really go off. That's right, we'll see what the other two are. I mean, second check is a critical trigger. And the third check is another rough seas That was actually a pretty good triple drive, all things considered. Well, it does give him a little bit of guard to be able to get through the next turn. Depends on what the ship player can throw at him, if he can burn through all of them. Indeed, so I believe it's 11, 21, 27 will be this, this column on the side here when it does the attack. potentially coming out by the Shadow Player? No? It looks like it does have that heal trigger in hand. Do you see the G guard? Let's see what he goes into I'm here. I'm going to assume maker. Though he might be trying to get a grade 1 in the it looks like he... It does look like he's going for Ludwig. It does go Ludwig. You're yeah, probably aiming to get that uh, grade 1 in the drop zone to hopefully get rituals. Yes, yes. Probably try to, to unlock the ritual 3 for the 3 stride. So we see the counter blast. And that's that grade 2 I was talking about in the drop zone. That again would have been another 10k or 15k guard. The cannoneer is also quite a good guard as he's able to retire probably the Hoel from the board of the Shadow, Pal Shadow Paladin player and then attack the Morfessa. Yeah, that's honest. Which we could see as quite a good, uh, quite a strong play to be Because you're either going to force that Shadow player to guard one of them and you're going to guarantee to really kill uh, the other one. Uh, yeah. Losing those great twos as a Shadow Paladin it really, really hurts the deck. We could see him just try and punch through the face though, but the Shadow Paladin player does look to have maybe four or five cards in hand at this moment. Ah, uh, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, four or five by the looks of it. Or he could just go into a Gas Dragon and just go straight in on the face. <laughs> go for Levi. Another play that could happen. He's thinking about it. Again, I did like that Cannoneer play here, personally. I think it was just really, really nice to uh, guarantee the retire and then put pressure on the other grade too. Granted, it was a bit of a hard choice because no, really no matter what he picked, he's, he's very far behind in the terms of this game. Especially against yeah. an, a very aggressive deck such as Shadow Power. Ten K guards the attack. Uh, end of the turn. Hollows will resolve. That was a really good turn. Thanks. Come back slowly on the stride. Um, I'm sorry. See the hollows resolve. There we go. As I said, straight into the yeah. spectrum. Big play counter blast one. I'm gonna eat that dude. Uh, counter blasting for for Luard's strides. Double yeah. defeat. Here we go. This turn is going to be. Huge. This is the Shadow player about to go off by the looks of that. That was a nice little play there to give a huge, huge heap of power for basically nothing right there.
all righty. So it's the uh, the mandatory counter charge and soul charge of having the whole LNK hit and combo. Which honestly is one of the best combos for Shadow Paladins out there. It actually makes this deck work, realistically. Two grade ones? Uh, this deck would not where near have the power it does oh, right God. now. We see two grade ones go into the soul charge there as well, and some more power because why the hell not, I guess. Now, let's see if he actually attacks the correct way here. Well, I think it really matters at this point. I think the game is uh, kind of just going to wrap up one way or another. It really is. It's just a, a few too many attacks. You see swinging with the Morfessa boosted. Oh, no, changing our mind. Though, what is interesting here is the, uh, the G-Guard could be used to uh, at least get a little bit of advantage back for the... Uh, uh, not the Gear Chronicle player, sorry, the uh, Grand Blue player. Does he have a heal trigger in hand, though? He does. He does, indeed. He decides to take the damage. It's a stand trigger, so that is a little bit of power he can get back. Can't stand, can't stand, can't stand. You can't stand, but you do get power. Yeah, power. Um, standing one of these guys? That doesn't really matter, does it, when it's not your turn? Yeah, I know, it's just... So standing the rear guard, not that that matters on his own turn. Uh, sorry, on his opposition turn, giving 5,000 power to the vanguard. Uh, Morphosa did hit, so he does get the skills to get another Cahedon, which again gives even more power to the vanguard and the Hoel and the mandatory counter charge and soul charge. Which is, the, honestly, this is about as big as you can get in this deck. You, the only way you can get bigger is have another Hoel, but that's more than often not always going to happen. Likes the dark soul charge there, and, and we're probably right. going to go in for the kill here, honestly. So, swing. See the judge actually reminding the Shadow Power of the player of uh, uh, how the result is affects there. Very good on how judging stuff. Yeah. 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 People will forget if you're a judge in Vanguard, do remember to call your players when you start. At the end of the battle, you can. If, you, if it's when you're in the battle, battle, yes, then you can boost. Okay, cool. Swing. So we have a huge uh, attack. Now he, what's he going to So, uh, 26, 42, 49, I believe is how big this Vanguard is. I think you're right, it's, it's big. So a perfect guard, he does have another Water Spout Jin in the drop zone, so he is able to counter charge and uh, damage. Which is, is going to be helpful if he can live through this big spectrum. So a critical trigger, we'll see how the Shadow Paladin player decides to play this. He should give all effects to the Vanguard as he is re-standing and the opponent only has a few cards in hand. It wouldn't... It does look like he's going to. It wouldn't actually matter where he gave. And another critical oh. trigger. Oh wow, this game is now yep, over. That's a... That's a... Retiring two units. Another 10k to the Vanguard. Spectrum. Oh my lord. <laughs> so from 42 to 62 in a blink and of an eye. And here we go. This is going to be the big death swing right now. Absolutely this massive. This is over. Two cards in hand. I don't think even with the G guard. Wow. What a turn from our Shadow Paladin player. They actually managed to, to set it up to make it big, and we see the counting of the numbers right now. No, 58. 58. Let's see what our uh, Grumbu player can manage. Let's see if he can actually guard this. I don't think I don't he can. Think he mathematically can. He's got a heal trigger and another 10k in hand. He does. See, this is where the early play of uh, actually calling the heal trigger to the rear guard really did cost him. He could he have, have stopped the Cahedon that's going to be swinging at or the whole Cahedon? Uh, let me think. So it would have probably not. Um, probably not, realistically speaking, but what he could have done was actually gone into the, uh, the, um, heal trigger, sorry, not the heal trigger, the G guard that allows him to retire a unit and call, which will then put him in generation break two. Now, if he'd had a skeleton kind of near on board, he would have been able to retire it. Because of being a generation break two, thanks to the G guard, he could have milled three from the top of his deck, called back the skeleton kind of near from the drop zone, using its effect to hollow it, counterblast one, retire said Hoel, and draw a card. It was very interesting to see Which, that. The, the few little misplays on both sides were how it ended up there. And we, we do apologise for the camera cutting the, the last few seconds of he, that game. Uh, essentially, the, the Shadow Paladin player just re-swung with his Vanguard and 